Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1994 Grumman LLV. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline 4 and down below is a 3 speed automatic transmission. And guys, if you can't tell by the inflection in my voice, I am so I am so excited. I'm even stumbling over my words to be driving an LLV. This is one of my bucket list reviews and I'm finally getting to do it. So we have a lot in store today. Let's not mess around. Let's get into it. But first, I do have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. You could also buy stickers and merchandise on my store and read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to the Grumman LLV. What is this thing? Well, if you're an American, you already know what this thing is. This is a mail truck used by the United States Postal Service. From the mid 1980s until, well, still here today in 2022, Grumman is an industrial manufacturer. They actually built fighter jets and box trucks and industrial things. And so back in the early 1980s, the USPS was looking for a new vehicle to deliver packages in. The DJ5 Jeep, which I have also reviewed and will be at the end of this video, was getting old. It didn't have power brakes. It didn't have ABS. And they were really just leftover Willys Jeeps crudely assembled to deliver packages. However, that was the first official United States Postal Service vehicle. This is now the second. LLV stands for Long Life Vehicle and this vehicle's had a long life indeed. The newest possible LLV you could buy was from 94. Technically, this vehicle is a 1995. However, it's registered and VIND as a 94 because it was built with 94 parts and technically Grumman wasn't supposed to be building them after 94 because of safety regulations and whatnot. But this was actually assembled in 95, but it's VIND as a 94. So that's what we're running with today. But let's get back to that 2.2 liter up front. Well, that is a one year specific engine. Most other mail trucks that you'll see had the 2.5 liter Iron Duke made famous by the Fiero or S10. Well, this is actually a 2.2 liter also found in like the Cavalier and also Chevy S10. And this is the most powerful LLV offered. It made 120 horsepower, but it's a little workhorse engine and actually has some pretty decent applications after chevy stopped offering it in the cavalier when the cavalier ended in the mid 2000s they actually continued to use this engine as a forklift engine that's how robust it is is it showy no but it works and it makes 10 more horsepower than the outgoing iron duke so that's something cool like i said paired to it three speed automatic transmission auto tragic is a good word for it it's very lazy with the shifts doesn't really want to shift but this is for around town use. This isn't geared for the highway. And so here we go, acceleration test in a Grumman LLV. 15, 25, 35, which is 10 under the speed limit of this road. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not fast. Last but not least, in case you wanted to know, the Grumman LLV is rear wheel drive. Also, let's talk about how it drives. It drives okay. It has softer suspension than what I was assuming. I have plenty of space in here. That's the one thing is that the LLV is actually not small at all. It's actually pretty big. And so I have tons of space here, which I am loving and soaking up. Steering is light, easy, direct. The throttle, there's not much to it, but it works. And visibility in the front, fantastic. Visibility out the rear, good luck, Charlie. Not great. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. We have some cool postal service stuff in here. Well, in front of me, I have a couple of gauges. Now, these are also 1994 exclusive gauges. Because of the engine change, they actually changed the speed sensor. And doing so, they gave it a different gauge cluster. So on the left, I have my speed in the center, I have which gear I'm in, and on the right, I have my oil pressure, battery voltage, fuel, and coolant temperature. I also get look before backing up at the top. Just a quick reminder for anyone driving the LLV. And then I do get my fan speed. So I do have an interior fan, no air conditioning, but I do get a two-speed Jasper fan. 
Living in luxury here in the LLV. Then I do have my hazard switch as well as my cargo lights. And I do get these vents, which look almost straight pulled out of the 80s Cavalier, which I think is fantastic. And down below, I do have a cigarette lighter, as well as this switch off to the left that actually doesn't do anything. Caleb just put it in here to fill a hole. And I do have an ashtray off to the right, which was actually added by a previous government service that owned this vehicle. In between the dashboard and the ashtray is actually the handbrake. Now this handbrake has had tons of industrial uses in plenty of other applications, not just handbrakes for cars. And so it's very, very tactile, very utilitarian, very much this is what they had and this is what they used. Kind of interesting. The steering wheel says Chevrolet on it, which is hilarious. It was directly pulled out of the Chevy S10. Steering column and all, that's why what's really interesting is that this is a right-hand drive vehicle, but the turn signals are still on the left, contrary to all other right-hand drive vehicles I've driven, obviously besides the Postal Jeep, which had the same setup for the same reason. They just pulled a Chevy S10 steering column off the shelf and put it in the Grumman. That being said, the horn still works, so probably for the first time in your life, definitely for the first time in mine, what does a Grumman LLV horn sound like? Pretty normal. On the door, you just get this giant latch and I do get a crank for the window, which is kind of nice. But most of the time, you just drive with the door open. That's kind of what you do and what most mail carriers do. The only reason I'm not doing that is because it's actually a pretty chilly morning here in Seattle and I only have shorts and a t-shirt on. So otherwise, I'd be driving like this all day. Uh, but I would be an icicle by the time this video is over. Actually, you know what? It's not that bad. It's a little breezy, but easy breezy, beautiful Zach. I also just, I love this sound. Ready? How many times have you heard that in your life? I actually get to do it today. Yeah. The latch is military grade nearly i mean it is solid as a rock solid as an obsidian block which i really truly love moving into the center i don't have much that's factory caleb added this alarm clock up top just to know what time it is while driving as well as this is an added sort of post not a hundred percent sure what it was used for but a cool little grumman thing now we do have added cup holders here they are not factory cup holders so unfortunately, but unsurprisingly, the Grumman LLV fails the big friggin' bottle test. Up on the dash, I do have some climate controls. You pull it out for defrost and push it in for max heat. Down to the left of the gauge cluster, I do actually have some heating options for defrost and temperature and things like that. Very rudimentary, very basic. Then I do actually get a passenger seat. Now, not all LLVs got this. This is actually called an observer seat. A lot of them would actually have a mail table, like a tray table to hold mail, obviously, to make distributing it easier. So this is kind of a rare option. And honestly, I rode around in it. It's very comfortable. The seat itself isn't comfortable, but you have so much space that it actually isn't a bad ride and kind of fun to ride in an LLV. Speaking of seats, they're not very comfortable. However, they are durable. Mail carriers get in and out of these seats every day, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So they had to be durable and they've lasted this long, not only 168,000 miles, but imagine how many times the previous users have gotten in and out in and out in and out pretty impressive stuff now the seat belts are weird as well not only do you have a separate lap belt and shoulder belt but the way you hook in the shoulder belt there's this little d looking thing and you sort of put it in and twist very very interesting not super safe but it's what grumman had and it's what grumman used speaking of seats we don't actually have back seats obviously however we do have the cargo area. So let's hop around back and talk about that. So in order to get back here, you do have a key slot, spin it. Now on normal LLVs, there's actually a spring. So you have to hold the key to the right and then pull up. Caleb removed the spring so you can just pull up. Now something cool is also that the key actually says Grumman LLV, pretty interesting. 
Back here, obviously Caleb has a little pad set up. This is actually for napping on his break at work. But something really, really cool is that you get these sort of hooks back here. I'm trying to shoot a YouTube video. Can you please shut up, Alaskan Airlines? God. These are the same you'd find in like an RV or an, a U-Haul even. Like you could just hook stuff into that, which is fantastic. First thing I noticed back here, tons more space than the DJ5 Postal Jeeps from the previous generation of USPS vehicles. Really, really cool. Tons of space back here. Obviously, different municipalities would fit this with different shelves or whatever type of mail they were commonly found to carry. They would match that back here. Something interesting is that this actually is an OEM Grumman LLV floor mat. It's an official one. It's made out of recycled tires. And they stopped producing it after around 2001-ish. They stopped making these. So... Eat your heart out, super rare cargo covers for FDRX7s. This is even more rare. There are only about four for sale in the country when Caleb bought this one, which is insane. Anyway, that's what the inside of the back of a postal truck looks like, in case you're ever wondering. And next time you see one, you know what's back. Oh, I actually almost forgot. I do have vents on the side here. So these are really, really cool because you can go like this. Can bend them out like that and then it lets air flow out of the back area pretty cool however you can also push them that way and now they suck air in really really cool design really basic simple easy design but something that Grumman thought of very very cool anyway like I said earlier this is a bag of mail truck, in case you were ever curious. Very, very cool. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I love the look of the Grumman LLV. I think it's cute, I think it's adorable, but I also love the utilitarian purpose of it. All of these rivets that you see are actual, real rivets in the aluminum body. Remember I mentioned that Grumman was an aircraft manufacturer, and so this is actually aircraft aluminum that they used, and the actual proper rivets. The headlights are square, they're cheap, they're easy to purchase, easy to change. This is a Chevy S10 chassis, but the rear track is actually widened ever so slightly. This car stands at seven foot by seven foot by 14 feet long. The windshield is flat. And interestingly enough, the owner told me that if he ever cracked a windshield or needed a new one, that the company that distributes Grumman parts will sell him 10 of them. They are only sold in 10 packs because they were sold to municipalities. They were fleet vehicles. They would sell a ton of them. So why would they ever have to sell just one? Not ever. So fingers crossed that nothing happens to this one. The other thing that you'll notice about the exterior is that it doesn't have the US Postal Service stickers on it or livery or paint or whatever they used. There's a good reason for that. It would be a felony if it still had them. The owner, Caleb, who I keep mentioning, thank you so much, Caleb, talked to someone who worked for the government and they said, if you so much as wear khakis and a blue polo while driving that car, you could get a felony. If it still had the USPS logos on it, he could get a felony. If you park in front of a mailbox, there's a risk that you could get a felony. You would go to prison and lose your right to vote and probably pay a lot, a lot of money. That's how serious the government takes impersonating a government worker because the United States Postal Service is a government entity, one of the oldest. So something to keep in mind, that's why you don't see the USPS screaming eagle livery. But now let's get on to my final thoughts, finally driving a holy grail vehicle for me really truly one of the top of my bucket list vehicles to drive was this i love this thing i love this thing for two reasons first of all i love the utilitarian purpose of it i love that everything in here has a purpose it's literally called the long life vehicle it was built to endure and endure it has there's just something so fascinating about something designed to a purpose and no other reason even the Toyota Camry, as basic as that car is, someone designed it and tried to make it attractive. They tried to give you creature comforts like leather and they offered navigation, sure. This, none of that, they don't care if you're comfortable. It just had to work. That's all it had to do and that's 
what it does very well. The other reason I love it is because it's so unique and interesting and just, it's been the backbone of our country for the last 30 years and yet, what do you know about it? If you live in America, you've seen one probably almost every day of your life. And yet very few have driven them and even fewer have owned them. And so driving this LLV, I think to all of the letters I've written to my friends, all the postcards I've sent to relatives, all of the flat rate boxes I've sent, trucks like this enable Americans to have a solid, reliable form of communication. Is it without its hitches? No, of course not, but no surface is. And so the next time you see a Grumman LLV running around your town, give it an old tip of the hat. They're old, they're tired, but they're workhorses. And there's just something so incredibly respectable about this little vehicle. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not the fastest, hottest thing in the world, but man, it might be one of the most important vehicles in history. Thanks Grumman. I'm glad you took a break from making airplanes for a little bit. And huge thank you to Caleb. Incredible, uh, words can't even describe how thankful I am to Caleb for letting me take out his Grumman LLV. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. He has tons of fascinating, great LLV videos. If you want more about this vehicle, he is the guy to talk to and he is the channel to watch, which is just fantastic. Please go check him out. It'll be linked in the description below, like I said. Go subscribe to him. Helping him is helping me and it is greatly, greatly appreciated. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.